Good morning. Okay, bunch of announcements to begin with. First of all, we ask some young adults in this congregation to come help make soup, and they did. And then we ask some not so young women in this congregation to come and help pack soup, and they did. And then I ask you to overpay for soup, and you did. Uh, about 350 bucks invested in the raw materials for all the soup, and we raised close to $1,400. Because you overpaid. Thank you. Thank you. It's, uh, it's always a privilege to go and drop that check off down at God's Helping Hands. Uh, I wish we could make uh, like a big giant novelty check. That would be fun. Yeah. <laughs> Eh, not worth it just for one photo, so it's okay. But, but yeah, once again, well done. The, the need is very great. God's helping hands will also benefit when you come to the Pancake Trove Tuesday Pancake Supper. That's your price of admittance. Uh, take a look. The grapevine will be going out next week. Take a look at the needs of God's helping hands and bring in one of those items. So... They can restore their, restock their supplies. Um, and get signed up, of course, like a big turnout. And then Ash Wednesday begins. And say goodbye to green as a pyramid color for a good long while. Because we've got to go through Lent and then through the Easter season. Have Pentecost Sunday. Holy Trinity Sunday? Then we'll get back to the green. All right. A couple other announcements. Luther's Men in Mission, tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. Uh, there's no entertainment schedule. It's going to be kind of a working meeting. But I have been practicing my yodeling. So, Charles, if you would like me to entertain tomorrow, just, just ask. Worship team meeting. Uh, Bulletin says it's in here, but the women welcomes meeting in here. Please uh, go to the choir room for the worship team meeting. Hey, what's welcome meeting for? Well, um, the Saxagatha Conference meeting is here at Our Savior Lutheran Church on March 13th. And you're asked to remain, welcome members asked to remain after worship to discuss the plans for that meeting. And also, mark your calendar, the World Day of Prayer in the Midlands will be hosted by Emmanuel Lutheran Church at noon on Friday, and they are asking that ladies wear hats, as England will be the country highlighted by the speaker. Are you a chance to wear your big chapeau? <laughs> Bring a bag lunch, one dessert. And a drink will be provided. Don't try taking two desserts. I guess that's the implication there, huh? Yeah. One! You get one! All right. That's it for the announcements. What do you mean by that? <laughs> hey, how about we get ready for worship with confession and forgiveness? Found on page three of your worship folder. Please rise. I need a bulletin. Yeah, I'll take I'm just gonna borrow it now. When him gets, I'll give this back to you. We begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open and all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let's confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another.
Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, that we may delight in your will, walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Our opening hymn is hymn number 631. Please rise. Grace of our Lord Jesus Christ 
The love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. pray. O oh Lord Jesus, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, we may sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. And where there is despair, hope. Grant, O oh Divine Master, that we may seek to console, to understand, and to love in your name. For you live and reign with the Spirit, Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Hey, we got some little ones here. You guys want to come forward for a children's sermon? Hi, guys. Long time no see. You can sit right there. Oh, I'm going to be preaching today about a Bible character you may not know. His name is Joseph. Now, you probably know this Joseph. Right? He went with Mary all the way to Bethlehem, and the baby Jesus was born. Right? That was Jesus' father on earth. But we're talking about a different Joseph today. And he was born a long, long time before Jesus was ever born. His name is Joseph. They call him Joseph the All-Comely. Do you know what comely means? It means handsome. I'll show this picture to these people. Look at that good-looking rascal. Do you see any similarities? Yeah, I wanted to be called Lance the All-Comely in high school, but it never took. It never took. But, Joseph had a whole bunch of bad things happen to him. But he persevered. That means he kept working at it. And he trusted God. And in the end, things turned out. And so that's one thing we can learn from Joseph. There's lots of things. So I'll be telling the story of Joseph today when I'm up there preaching. So listen to that, and when you go home, you can tell your mom and dad that you heard all about Joseph from the Old Testament. Okay? You think you want that for a poster for your room? 
He's not that good looking, huh? Hey, thanks for coming up. You can't have this one. The first reading is from the 45th chapter of Genesis. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. It is, is my father still alive? But his brothers could not answer him. So dismayed were they at his presence. Then Joseph said to his brothers, Come closer to me. And they came closer. He said, I am your brother, Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed or angry with yourselves because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve life. For the famine has been in the land these two years, and there are five more years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvest. God sent me before you to preserve for you a remnant on earth and to keep alive for your many survivors. So it was not you who sent me here, but God. He has made me a father to Pharaoh and Lord of all of all his house and ruler over all the land of Egypt. Hurry and go up to my father and say to him, Thus says your son Joseph, God has made me lord of all Egypt. Come down to me, do not delay. You shall settle in the land of Goshen, and you shall be near me, you and your children and your children's children, as well as your flocks, your herds, and all that you have. I will provide for you there since there are five more years of famine to come, so that you and your household and all that you have will not come to poverty. And he kissed all of his brothers and wept upon them. And after that, his brothers talked with him. Here ends the reading. We will read this psalm responsibly. <clears throat> Do not be provoked by evildoers, do not be jealous of those who do wrong. Put your trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and find safe pasture. Commit your way to the Lord. Put your trust in the Lord and see what God will do. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently. Do not be provoked by the one who prospers, the one who succeeds in evil schemes. For evil, evil doers shall be cut off, but those who hope in the Lord shall possess the land. But the lowly shall possess the land. They will delight in abundance of peace. You, O Lord, will help them and rescue them. You will rescue them from the wicked and deliver them, because in you they seek refuge. The second reading is from the 15th chapter of 1 Corinthians. But someone will ask, how are the dead raised? With what kind of body do they come? Fool, what you sow does not come to life unless it dies. And as for what you sow, you do not sow the body that is to be, but bear a seed, perhaps of wheat or some other grain. But God gives it a body as he has chosen, and to each kind of seed its own body. So it is with the resurrection of the dead. What is sown is perishable. 
what is raised is imperishable. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown a physical body. It is raised a spiritual body. If there is a physical body, there is also a spiritual body. Thus it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being. The last Adam became a life-giving spirit. But it is not the spiritual that is first, but the physical, and then the spiritual. The first man was from the earth, a man of dust. The second man is from heaven. As was the man of dust, so are those who are of the dust. And as is the man of heaven, so are those who are of heaven. Just as we have borne the image of the image just as we have borne the image of the man of dust, we will also bear the image of the man of heaven. What I am saying, brothers and sisters, is this flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Here ends the reading. Holy Gospel, according to St. Luke, the sixth chapter. Jesus said, but I say to you that, listen, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you. And if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners love those who love them. If you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners do the same. If you lend to those from whom you hope to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend sinners to sinners and to receive as much again. But love your enemies, do good and lend, expecting nothing in return. Your reward will be great, and you will be the children of the Most High. For he is kind to the grateful and And the wicked, be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For the measure you give will be the measure you get back. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Too much stuff. Just for the camera. I don't know if the camera got my pictures I was showing during the children's sermon, but this is Joseph, the father of Jesus. This is Joseph, the all-comely. And this is Lance, the not-so-comely. I 
I love these stories from Genesis because, you know, on one scale, they're like watching Game of Thrones or something like that. They're big in scale and all this sort of thing. And then on the other, you know, these fa- it's the stories of families and generations and just the stories that happen in these families you know, can be just outrageously real. You know, as soon as there's a a family, once Adam and Eve have a couple of kids, well, you get family dynamics at play. And the cruel reality is, is that as humans, we can be brutal to our own brethren. And so Cain slays Abel. And you can pick these stories apart. They're not that long, but the, the reason they've got so much is, but are so short is because they've been told over generations, and there's nothing that remains in these stories so many times that doesn't absolutely, it must be there. So, oh, what happened there? Okay. Okay. So we're talking about family stories in Genesis. And, you know, the story of Joseph is one of the great ones. It's a a long narrative. As long as any of the others of Abraham and of, certainly of Isaac, uh, Jacob, And so I want to talk about Joseph's story because we're at the very end of it, our reading today. And, you know, that's going to be the basis of kind of what we're talking about. But, you you know, you learn so much being in a family. I can remember growing up, I was in first grade, my brother's in fifth grade. We shared a, a bedroom. He had the top bunk and I had the bottom bunk. And my brother had this kind of wooden treasure chest looking thing that he kept private stuff in. Well, I came into my bedroom one day and his box was on my bed, on the bottom bed, bunk. And then there was a paper laying right next to it that said, I love Angela. Well, I thought he was punking me because there was a girl in my first grade class named Angela. You know, but I'm in first grade, that kind of age where you're like, oh, I don't like girls, yuck. You know, so I thought he was trying to put this note to say, hey, look, I saw the note you read. I didn't do that. And you know, I went out, he was outside by the side of the house. And I said, what did you put this on my bed for? Holding a nut, note from him. And he says, you know, what were you doing getting into my treasure box? And I tried to convince him that he had left it open on my bed. He didn't believe me. He backed me up against the garage wall and it hits me on the forehead so that my head hits the brick wall behind me. And of course, I start wailing, and I go inside. Yes, yeah, God pushed me ahead my head on the wall, blah, blah, blah. And my mother said, I'll never forget this. Don't do that, Scott. And it was at that moment, right there, it was at that moment, right there, that I learned what the word injustice really meant. I mention that because Joseph, of course, has a great deal of injustice sent his way. Uh, but his father, Jacob, kind of got tricked into marrying two different sisters. One named Leah, one named Rachel. And it was Rachel that Jacob always loved. Always loved her more than Leah. 
Don't get me wrong. He loved Leah. He gave her enough loving so that she had 11 sons. But he could never have a son with Rachel. So when he, she did bear him a son, he immediately shot past his brothers in the father's favor. So much so, this is, you know, this is the story of Joseph in the coat of many colors. His father gives him a very ornate robe to wear around, and his brothers are like, what the heck? The reason I'm telling all this, because I know, you know, for some of us, it might be years since you've read the story of Joseph. Yeah, so it's all a good reminder. And, but Joseph's a weird little boy. He keeps having dreams. You know, he dreams that uh, I was the sun, and you guys were the moon. Dad was the moon, and you guys were all stars, and you all bowed down to me in the sky. And that was about enough for the brothers. You know, they think... This guy thinks we're going to be bowing down to him. And they conspired against him, and they were going to kill him. But they ended, not, ended up not killing him. They threw him into a pit, spared his life, but then they sold him into slavery. That's an injustice. And so... That's the beginning of Joseph's time in Egypt. He gets sold into slavery. The slave drivers take him into Egypt. And in Egypt, um, he's a slave servant to a powerful man named Potiphar, or whose title is Potiphar. And he does a good job. And so God blesses him you know, by giving him great success. And uh, everything's going pretty well. Until Potiphar's wife decides, hey, that Joseph is one comely man. And she puts the moves on him, and he's like, no! And then she does it again, and she rips her own clothing and screams after he rejects her. You know, they come running, what's wrong, Potiphar's wife? This guy attacked me. Well, slaves don't get to do that. It's certainly untrue, but... He gets hauled to prison. And once again, his ability with dreams comes forward again. He says, you know, he's in there with two guys. The Pharaoh's cup bearer, that's the guy that makes sure that there's not any poison in Pharaoh's cup. And he's in there with the chief baker. And they have dreams while they're in there. The baker, the, the, the cupbearer has a dream that he's got three cups before him, and he's squeezing handfuls of grapes into each, and then they turn to wine, and the, the one he's holding in his hand, they, it's Pharaoh's cup. And Joseph says, oh yeah, well that's what the, the three cups are three days, and in three days... Uh, you'll be lifted up and placed at the head of Pharaoh's table again as cupbearer. You'll be restored. And the baker heard, wow, that's a pretty good dream. I, let me tell you about the weird dream I've been having. It was three baskets of fine cooked pastries and breads and whatnot, and, and I'm holding all three of them, two in my hands, one on my head. And the birds are eating now the top one. And... So tell me what that means. Because I, I like the sound of the cupbearer's dream. He said, well, the three baskets are three days. And in three days, uh, Pharaoh will lift your head right off your body. You're going to die, and you'll be food for the birds. Well, sure enough, these things come true. And the cupbearer, who was restored to his fortunes, said, I'm not going to forget you, Joseph. <laughs> he forgot. But as a dream was troubling Pharaoh, about seven thin ears of corn, eating seven fat ears of corn, and seven thin cows swallowing whole seven fat cows, the cupbearer remembers. He says, 
Because they had lots of people coming in trying to interpret Pharaoh's dream. They couldn't do it. And Joseph says, oh, well, I'm here. what that means is we're going to have seven years, seven years of plenty in this nation. And that's going to be followed by seven years of disastrous famine. And immediately, now that he knows what his dream means, Pharaoh says, you're in charge of it. And so Joseph then is restored to a place. He's no longer in, sitting in the pit that his brothers threw him into. He's no longer a slave. He's no longer in prison. He's out, and he's on his move up. And sure enough, he, gets, he guides Egypt into storing up enormous amounts of food so that when the seven years of, of lean, seven years of famine strike, Egypt, because it's stored up so much, becomes very, very wealthy because no one else is growing food around. And only Egypt has food to sell. And so while he comes down, he see, so while this is all unfolding, he sees Jacob sent his sons to Egypt to try to purchase some food, and Joseph recognizes him. And he does this little trick with his little brother who he never had the opportunity to meet, but anyway, he's trying to get them to come on back and bring their father. But he kind of plays a little mean trick on them, and then finally we have the scene that we have this morning. Jesus said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? And they're shocked. You know, they haven't seen the guy in decades. He says, no, no, look. <laughs> you know, it's, it, it's okay. Yeah, you did some horrible things to me, but God has made it all work out. Go get our father, and I will give you a place to live. You'll have plenty. Bring all your flocks with you. You're sticking around. What, you know, and really what he's saying, because this is the important point. Did... Did God make Joseph's brothers throw him into a pit? Did God make Potiphar's wife make a move on Joseph? You know, did, John, did, 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 did Joseph, did the cupbearer forget because God made the cupbearer forget? And the point, the point of all this, did, 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 did God make my brother shove my head into a brick wall? No. Scott did that. That's my brother. Scott did that. So the point of it is this. We've got to be very, very careful. Our job as evangelists, that's to tell the good news of Jesus Christ. Now, a lot of times, when something bad happens, people say, well, that's all part of God's plan. Really? I mean, like bad things. Terrorism is part of God's plan? Childhood leukemia, is that part of God's plan? Drug addiction, crime, whatever. Are these bad things part of God's plan? Well, one who, that's not a very good God. And so, you know, please, certainly because you don't know it, you know. But if I hear you say, well, that's part of God's plan, it's something awful has happened, I think as your pastor, it's my duty to pinch you right here really, really hard. Whisper roughly in your ear, don't do that! No. Bad things can happen. For random reasons, bad things can happen uh, for, because 
They're instigated by the devil. Bad things can happen because we are sinners and sin against ourselves and one another. And bad things can possibly happen as the outcome. But God can redeem those things. I mean, in the, you know, ultimately, Paul's talking about the resurrection in this 1 Corinthians 15 passage. And death is going to happen to us all. But it's been taken care of through resurrection. That's God's redemption. Each and every one of us will be one day in the grave. But will also be resurrected into spiritual bodies, sharing life with God. If God, if it's in accord with God's will, he blesses it, shines upon it. If it's not in accord with God's will, he will redeem it. And I mean, I don't wonder, there's all kinds of theological arguments about called God's passive will, and is God allowing bad things to happen, but he didn't cause them to happen. You know, he's given us a free will so that we might make the choice. And, you know, rest assured, rest assured, that if the choice you make is in accord with God's will, he'll bless it. If it's not in accord with God's will, he can redeem it. That's the point of God being God. Amen. Our next hymn is hymn 719. Please arise.
confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Catholic Church, the, Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord is poured out upon us in abundance, so we are bold to pray for the church, the world, and all that God has made. Please kneel as able. You teach us to love our neighbors and the enemies alike. Encourage your church to follow the leading of your love, especially when it is risky or difficult. Help us to show mercy, just as we have received mercy. God of grace, Nurture fields that lie dormant, resting until it's time to bloom again. Bless farmers and all who cultivate fields and urban gardens and orchards. Give favorable weather for planting. Bring forth from buried seed an abundant harvest. And guard against famine and disease. God of grace, look upon our world with mercy, that we delight in an abundance of peace. Protect all whose lives are marred by rest and civil, civil war, civil unrest and war. Release political prisoners and amplify the voices that challenge us to seek forgiveness and pursue nonviolence. God of grace, your people cry out for mercy. Console hearts that long for forgiveness. Mend broken relationships. Heal bodies that suffer chronic pain or illness. Strengthen and deliver all whose spirits are troubled, especially those we now name loud and in our hearts. God of grace, you bind us together in one family. Teach us to forgive one another and to resolve conflicts with humanity and patience. Bless families of all shapes and sizes and show love to those who are lonely or grieving. God of grace, since we have such a great hope in your promises, O God, we lift these and all of our prayers to you in confidence and faith. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Let's rise. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Please share God's peace.
Christ. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth, and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending In the night which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Daily bread. We forgive those who trespass against us. It is not to temptation. Come to the table where Christ meets you. Eat, rejoice, and be glad.
Now the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. together. God of wonder, in Jesus we behold the light of the world come near, as you have come among us now. Send us out in joy, hastening to share the good news of your love. We ask this in the name of Jesus, through Spirit dwelling among us now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Our final hymn is hymn 537, On Our Way Rejoicing. Love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh, there you go. Yeah. 